So I decided to study celiac disease, which is actually a condition that my mom has and was diagnosed later on in her life. And so I kind of got to see the struggle of celiac early on in her life and not being aware of that she had it and now how she is um, post being diagnosed and kind of the differences there. And I was really curious what it was all about. So celiac is essentially an immune response in our body where it's negatively responding to the introduction of gluten, which is a protein we find in barley, wheat, and rye. Uh, and so what we basically have is that in our small intestine, we have these little villi, which are finger-like, kind of worm-like lining of our small intestine, which are really primarily there to protect but add surface area for absorption in our small intestine. And so when our body has gluten in it and you have the diagnosis of celiac, you're negatively responding to that protein and our immune system uh, kind of fights itself as well as wants to reject any of that stuff, that, that gluten. And um, in the long term, it's actually really dangerous because our small intestine will eventually kind of become damaged and those villi won't work properly. And so then we won't be absorbing nutrients, which is actually a really big deal. And so one of the things that celiac.org talked about was that one in a hundred people will be diagnosed but it's actually a really hard thing to diagnose because it's very specific um, blood tests that you have to do and the signs and symptoms won't always lead doctors in the right direction because they can be many different differential diagnoses based off of some of the uh, symptoms that people experience. Those examples are abdominal bloating, pain, chronic diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, pale, foul smelling, or fatty stool, weight loss and fatigue, and the list can go on. There's over 200 symptoms associated with celiac. And so oftentimes doctors can be misled at first and have um, a hard time finding it unless they do a specific blood test. So for me, the takeaway with some of this celiac disease is that it's not treated by medicine really, it's strictly diet. And so for us, uh, I think we sometimes assume there is a medicine for everything, but in this case it really isn't. And for celiac, it's just taking away gluten. And so having a completely gluten-free diet is the best way for us to take away those signs and those negative symptoms that you have with the disease and the immune response, but also to help restore that lining, those villi that line our small intestine, which is really important because we want to be able to give proper nutrients to our bodies. Uh, one article said that it was primarily a genetic thing passed on along in families, saying that about 10 to 20 percent of people who are diagnosed with celiac will most likely have a family member who also has it or had it. Um, it's also more prevalent in uh, women than it is men, and children actually will be diagnosed uh, with it more than adults will be. My big takeaway with this disease is for us to recognize that our diets are a very important and vital role in our health and the longevity of our care. Uh, medicine is a great thing, but oftentimes too, disease processes are relying on just the basic interaction with our environment, and that includes the nutrients that we eat and fuel our bodies with. It was a really fascinating thing to kind of learn about and how my mom had to deal with that, and so for me to have a little bit more knowledge was really key. Hope you enjoy. Thanks.